Okay, so I'll pick some of the common things over your, I can say, introduction of data science and AI, and then we will discuss the career aspects of it. So here is agenda for today's talk, maybe around 40, first 40 minutes, I'll speak about uh, these four subtopics, and then we will open for a Q&A. There you can ask uh, any question related to these technologies and maybe related to career or as well as uh, any question related to uh, career scope or AI or data science in general. So first we'll see the introduction or overview of data science and artificial intelligence. There are a lot of news around this one, not from today or recently, but I think maybe now it's close to one decade where these were initially like buzzwords and now they have like significant presence uh, in your personal devices or on enterprise level on corporate or maybe in strategy making and in different domains. So we will discuss about uh, this. Then we will see some of the interesting applications of the AI, whether we are using day to day or there are some which like are really lot of uh, in the talk and they are like making the news. Then from the career perspective, we will see different roles. So data science and AI are the like interdisciplinary fields. There are various roles within those. So we will go through each one by one. And uh, lastly, we will see, okay, if you want to become a data scientist, so how does the path look like? At what stage you are currently, maybe a student, or a PhD student, research scholar, or maybe uh, already like experienced professional. So do you need to jump into this one or how the career track overall looks like? So first, uh, let's see what is AI or artificial intelligence. So I think people uh, spoke a lot of about AI and data science in last one decade. But the thing is, this is not a thing or technology which came in just last 10, 15 years. The root of uh, the AI is really very old. So first, uh, or, uh, the very interesting uh, milestone we can select was from 1950s, where Alan Turing, uh, like a great mathematician and computer scientist who realized that we are providing the commands to the computers or different machines, and then we are performing the task. So in his mind, that this was like obvious question rather than a human providing commands or instruction or do the explicit programs, can machine think itself? So this was the point where we can say like inception of AI was there. In next uh, two or three decades, there was not much research or work or application at individual level or maybe in academics or enterprise level because of there were certain restriction and it wasn't in that much scope. But recently, I can say 10 or 15 years where we have a lot of computation power. Now the computation it might seem expensive, but I think we are having this access to those one. So AI came back in uh, last 20 years and now the thing is different. Look, so it is seeing the boom and we are seeing a lot of application on a small devices or personal devices to enterprise level. But let's see what AI is actually. So I mentioned like, okay, we provide commands and do the instruction provide, provide it to the machines or computer. Can it, can we automate this? One as per the need. So AI refers like, okay, so the human are uh, having the intelligence and based on their intelligence, they provide some commands to the machines. Can machine mimic some of the pattern from their experience? So in case of computer, the experience is generated from the data. So we have data and that from that data, if we can extract some of the uh, behaviors and based on that can computer generates the new actions for the future. So this is the study where we learn uh, from the data and that experience is used in the uh, further different task. So in the right hand side on this uh, uh, plot, I have used uh, several branches or subfields within AI. The first one is machine learning. So this is typically where we uh, study about the different algorithm. They are used in different kind of task. Maybe it is a supervised learning where we are learning from the data and data itself have uh, the target variable, which we refer for the action. 
and maybe unsupervised learning where we don't know the target thing and we just groups or make the cluster. So that unsupervised learning, which I talk about is the reference to the clustering. Similarly, we have like semi-supervised one and the predictive analytics, which is heavily used on the industry. Uh, so this uh, machine learning and inside that deep learning sub branch uh, is the one of them. The second is if our data is in the form of speech or audio. So you have not seen that nowadays you can use Google Assistant and you can pass a command through your voice. That might be for searching or for setting the alarm for you, or maybe uh, sending a text over WhatsApp or maybe uh, doing uh, or doing another some predefined task that you can do just by your command. So where it happens like your speech is converted to text and text is now an standard form of command and that command is executed. So here we have two types further. Uh, if it is a speech, then we're supposed to convert for the text. For most of the mob, uh, Google Assistant or any similar personal assistant we use. Another one is like we can convert text to a speech. Let's say uh, I'm speaking right now and we want to create a script out of my voice automatically. So AI, if AI system is there, we can enable that one that will uh, take my input. Sorry, that is again for speech to text. And suppose there is a text already there and one blind person cannot read that one. Can we create our audio out of that text? Maybe so that that uh, person who cannot read, but he can listen. So there we can convert text into the speech. And next is vision. So if our data is in the form of uh, either images or videos, video is essentially like a collection of frames or collection of images. So if our data is in the format of uh, images or videos, then we studies this into a computer vision portion of AI, where we do the machine vision and image recognition. Uh, next is NLP. Uh, NLP stands for natural language processing. So if data is the format of text, one particular example is like uh, Twitter or any other post on Facebook or WhatsApp messages. So they are not in the numeric format. So if it is in the text, then we need to process them accordingly. So there are various applications, algorithm, which comes under NLP to pre-process the data and then do the task. Uh, next is expert system. These are like highly complex application where one of the portion is used as AI. Some examples are from the like defense where they have to make the decision system automatic. So in those expert system, AI is used. Then planning and optimization. So planning, let's say if it is a supply chain problem and we want to predict the demand, and if you want to optimize something for the e-commerce. So those studies are part of planning and optimization. Last but not least is robotics. So this is quite popular and we see like uh, many articles on news and blogs about this one. So here is the study where we use the software and hardware together to make some task completely automatic. We will see some of the example from the robotics. So this is just an overview of AI and uh, subfield and branches of this one. Uh, but let's, okay, this was just overview. And now uh, the question arises, okay, why is AI so important? Uh, one is one angle is just okay this is hugely contributing the economy and hence like there will be a lot of jobs currently there are and i think in future we expect they will be increased and second uh, part is like okay we are moving from like industrial area era to that machine era and now that automation era so i think most of the work where uh, industrial era just uh, did that okay there are laborious work or maybe that assembly line kind of work watch automated by uh, some kind of machines. Maybe it is electronics or mechanical machine. Now further, I think we are having more uh, automated machines or computer where the tasks are performed automatically. So if we see comparative study of uh, three different years, so this is basically a report of 2018 from World Economic Forum. So in 2018, uh, the human task, the task of overall done from the human being was 71% out of total. So machines uh, contribution was just 29% at that time. But uh, 22, that prediction was like, okay, 
from 71 uh, humans portion will reduce to 58 and machines will increase to 42 from 29. And this is prediction that in 25, more than half of the jobs will be performed by machine itself. So like here, the mention approximately 52%. So this rate of automation is increasing day by day. So here comes like, okay, if that rate of automation is increasing, so obviously the jobs will shift from a uh, manual job to the automated one. Here, I think AI play key role where like we are having the automated system. So we have to study this one. And I believe, uh, I think this is a core skill uh, every graduate should have. So those who are in currently universities or maybe they are studying independently, maybe they should consider that uh, machine learning and AI is a subject of interest. It is not like a field uh, which is separate from others. This is a interdisciplinary branch, I can say data science and AI, where it is used in almost every field. If you see some of them are mechanical engineer and they are using robotics and machine learning there. I saw some of them are electrical engineer, still they are using AI to, uh, to make their product smart. If you see some of uh, other engineers, they are also using. So this is just not SES or IT stuff. Uh, every branch or every domain, there are some application where we can use AI and make, uh, we can make our product smart. Okay, so this was just an overview of AI and where it was most of the like uh, algorithms or concept wise. Let's move to our data science. So uh, here uh, in the Venn diagram, I included uh, three different fields or domains. Uh, the one is on left-hand side, which is computer science or IT. So here we bring like, okay, a lot of application or a lot of softwares, for, uh, which also include like software development, machine learning. On the right-hand side, uh, on, in the Venn diagram, I use a uh, math and states. So this is a separate field from the mathematics where we have traditional research, machine learning as well. And let's say linear algebra, probability, statics. So these are the stuff which, we, which are used in the data science. Third one is, okay, if you are having the knowledge of computer science and math, is that enough? Uh, or is there anything else which is needed for data science? <clears throat> yeah, sure. So whenever we do any software development, we supposed to know about the domain or business. Let's say you are building a software for bank, then you should be aware of how that software will be used at the end user within the bank. Similarly, if you are doing any data science project, this is very much expected that you are aware of that business and you should know the basics of that domain. So overall, from technical perspective, we are having computer science and maths. And from the business angle, like we are having the like business knowledge of that particular domain. Suppose this is e-commerce, then you should know about how that e-commerce and that system works. If it is from retail or any supply chain or any other domain, you're supposed to get that domain knowledge. So basically, if you see in the data science, now I have put where all three things are there. I have kept that as a data science. So this data science is a common portion of all three things. From the computer science, we are taking the machine learning, AI, computer programming, and the software development uh, skills. From the math and states, we are taking the basic mathematics, like linear algebra, some sort of calculus as well then probabilities and the basics of states that is used. And third one is uh, the domain. So that is not restricted to any one particular domain. For whichever domain you are creating a project for the data science, you're supposed to know about that one. If you combine and take uh, the respective things from each three uh, circles, then there is a common portion. We can call that as a data science. So this is an interdisciplinary field that uses scientific methods that can come from traditional research or math. It processes the data, which can come from the computer science skill. Algorithm, which is again, like coming from a entire AI that can come, we can use both in computer science and math. And we have to create some systems so that it can extract knowledge and insights from the noisy, that noisy data can be structured on an structure. Once you got that insight, we can say, okay, this is a knowledge, and, in, uh, and actionable insights from the data. So this is just a one portion or one direction I'm giving. There's a lot of 
different direction within the data science where you can create and think about your project. So you might be wondering now, okay, this is data science, then where, uh, the, where is the AI in this Venn diagram? So let's see uh, one more uh, diagram here. Now this shows that what is the common in AI and data science. First, let's see that AI bubble. So outer side in yellow I'm mentioning is artificial intelligence. And then there is a sub branch we can call machine learning where we study like supervised learning, unsupervised learning. Then we call the deep learning. So in the deep learning, we are specific to the domains or the algorithm which we are using for artificial neural networks. In machine learning, uh, we are again having supervised and unsupervised, but we are having various algorithm like uh, linear regression, logistic regression, k nearest neighbor, SVMs, and many other categories of algorithm. Uh, if you go once uh, uh, outer side, it is artificial intelligence. So uh, uh, we can include the uh, like uh, robotics expert systems, which are not part of machine learning, but they are there in AI. Now it comes to okay, how these AI algorithms are being used in data science. So AI uh, circle is giving us mostly the technologies or the algorithms, which is one portion for the data science. Data science have its uh, over life cycle for the projects and different projects have different life cycle. So inside data science, we use AI's algorithms. That can come from like maybe deep learning, ML or AI or even robotics. So let's further see what else is there in data science. I have shown one big circle for data science. Something is common, which is coming from AI, but what else is there in data science? Let's see. Okay, so uh, this is one flow chart or a diagram. Uh, you might be wondering there is a no start point. Okay, that is fine. We are having a li uh, life cycle for some specific projects from the data science. This is not referring that 100% of the projects follow this one. This is more of applied research where you are having data or you have collected it some way and then you want to do some analysis on that on top of that one. So let's start with business understanding. Most probably we can start with either two way. One is business understanding and another way is like, okay, we have the data already collected. So in the first way, if you are a business expert or a data scientist, then you might feel, okay, there is a need where uh, we have to bring some AI or data science related uh, project, which will improve our product or maybe uh, another project. So in terms of business understanding, you have to formulate a problem. And if it is a data science problem, then you have to figure out the sources for your data. And then next you go to uh, data collection part. Suppose in the first phase, you don't know about how to collect, you don't already have the data. Maybe this is the second step where you have to bring your data and you have to figure out different resources. Suppose this is an e-commerce website, just for, like Amazon or Flipkart then you realize how much there is a hit rate for a particular item or a particular uh, category where you want to define some hit ratio. So you have to bring some uh, process where you can collect the data and then maybe you can get into some formats, maybe CSV or other formats, or you can get into different databases as well. So once you have collected data, so then it comes like a huge step, which takes generally a lot of time, which is data preparation. So generally when we retrieve data or collect or acquire the data, we do not get the data in proper formats. There might be many data quality related issues. So you have to check uh, each and every column if it is like uh, tabular data and maybe if it is a uh, NoSQL based data, then you have to pre-process in a different way. So those pre uh, preparation steps includes all the data quality validation part and you can bring more charts and you can check out layers or any imputations is required, or maybe there are different files you can combine and make a particular format, which you can use is per demand of uh, the AI algorithm. So once you have your data preparation steps ready, then further you can go for EDA, which is named as exploratory data analysis, in short, uh, EDA. So once your data is ready for modeling, so maybe you want to analyze those one and you want to bring the insights. So there you can go for some statistical test like 
P-test, P-test, ANOVA, or any other hypothetical hypothesis test. And maybe you can have some uh, uh, plots for different kind of variable, whether it is required for histograms or a, a different kind of scatter plot or a time series plot. So once you do EDA, you will realize, okay, this is my data. And if there is any problem with that, and what are the behavior uh, with two variable, you can get correlation, or if it is required with target variable, you can define according, uh, according to your methods. Okay, once AD is done and you are happy with your data preparation step, then it comes modeling. So this modeling parts uh, borrows the algorithm from AI. So here, like based on the problem statement, we select algorithms or maybe sometime one is not working, we try another one. And maybe it is uh, empirical research. Maybe you would like to bring your own algorithm, you tune the hyperparameters, and there's all those uh, technical stuff here. Uh, the output of this step is like you get a model or a, like a uh, list of models. After that, you supposed to bring the validation step or evaluation step. So here you can define your KPIs, like key performance indicator. That depends upon the type of algorithm you are using, whether it is accuracy matrix or R square or any other like RMSC based on your algorithm and data. When you are happy with your model and if it is performing well on the validation data, maybe you would like to go on port, uh, model deployment phase. So this is the place, okay, before this, everything was in your local system. There was no end user. As a technical guy, you was the only person who was using or testing that one. Once it goes for deployment phase, which means now it is going into the production and the customer or any other internal or external user can use it. So maybe there it requires like deployment and then you have to monitor your model, like how it is doing on real time data. And if there is any feedback, you again go for business understanding and include those feedbacks and do this loop again for the data collection, new data collection, preparation, then again for EDA modeling. So this is as uh, like, iterative process. So where you bring uh, some data or you bring some hypothesis and then validation and then building the model it happened. So this was uh, one example where like most of the companies uses this kind of life cycle for their data science project. Okay, then let's uh, move for some of the interesting application of AI. Previously, we seen the overview of AI and how AI is used inside uh, data science projects. So let's see, uh, okay, I'll not go into uh, very much details like how the systems were executed for these application, but just for uh, your curiosity and encouragement for this particular domain, I would like to bring some of the application we'll discuss uh, a brief overview. So the first, very first example which I took here is a driverless car or we can call autonomous car. So basically we need a driver who can drive a car. So a driver observes the front and side, uh, side mirrors and checks like, okay, how good I am to proceed with this further. So basically a driver sees or he captures some images of the environment. And based on that, his brain process, and he decides, okay, should I stop? or should I continue? Should I increase or decrease my speed? Is there any like warning for me? Is there any signal where I supposed to stop? So driver's brain process all those instruction is a habit. Like if we are ha having a practice of driving, so all those things happen dynamically and very quick in our brain and our brain provides the instruction to our hands and legs. And accordingly, we do that part. So thing is like, okay, our eyes are capturing those observations of surroundings and accordingly it decides. So can we put a camera and that camera will bring all sort of images or even videos, and then we process them and decides rather than the driver decides. So this was the idea of an autonomous car. And I think Google and Uber is having their own uh, they have already done that pilot projects and now they are doing the more uh, advancements on those because this is a really a 
very complex problem because if one minor error is there, I think the passenger may lose their life. So it has to be very accurate. So this is, I think, still not that common on US uh, roads or in India, Indian roads, but uh, most of the research are going through Google or particularly Uber in this. And also like some car making or car manufacturing companies like BMW or other OD and those like luxury cars, they are having this kind of projects in their uh, regular time. Uh, next uh, application of AI we can think is like a humanoid. So this is coming from the robotics one. On left hand side, you see a machine, which looks like a girl, but actually uh, it is just a wires and some chips and then used uh, this particular costume, which looks like a human being. Uh, a human robot is named as humanoid. And this particular one example is I'm taken from, I think robot is called Sophia, where you can talk like you are talking with your friend. So you can uh, like shake your hand and maybe you can ask some question, you will get some reply from there. The response is uh, I would request to, for, uh, to mute uh, if you are not raising any question to me as of now. Okay, let's continue. So uh, with this robot, I think the person can talk just like we are talking uh, with another person. So this one is like very uh, interesting application and it came like a few years back and was uh, big news in the industry. So here uh, in terms of technology, uh, we are using like uh, various sub branches. So first thing is it is about vision. So it takes like, okay, computer vision related algorithm to see who is sitting next and what kind of emotion uh, the robot supposed to provide. So, and the second part is supposed to work uh, take care of speech or audios because the commands it is receiving is from the human voice. So speech to text and text to commands that process is required. And then further, it's supposed to get the answer. So that answer come from the intelligence and that is maybe a text or command that again have to generate it from text to audio to response it back. So, and maybe uh, there are some sensors and all those technologies also used here. Okay, let's see one more example from robotics. Uh, again, this is a robotics chef. So maybe like sometime you think, okay, we will cook today. So maybe this is a question for today, but I guess in the newer future, uh, when this robots become very common, probably we will think every kitchen is having one of the uh, robot there. So here, this is one example from ABB company. So they have made uh, this chef. So this can cook some predefined recipes. So it was trend based on, okay, how one, uh, how one or more recipes are cooked and those commands were given to the, this particular machine. Uh, okay, this is one more example from robotics. So BMW company, like that's a luxury car company. They used to have uh, the robots even before AI era. But those robots were like more of like, okay, doing some traditional or processual work. So they were not that much advanced, but with the help of, okay, sure. So uh, I think previously we were discussing about the robotic chef. So uh, I think this is uh, one where uh, we are discussing about one company, ABB. So they have created this robot and provide some recipes, uh, predefined recipes and this act as a commands and the robot can make uh, or prepare those recipes uh, like uh, independently. You have to provide some ingredient, ingredients and all those required in, uh, details there. Similarly, uh, if we see uh, the robots, I think they were used uh, since many years, but those were, not, those were not like AI enabled or very smart robot. So this is one example of uh, BMW, a luxury car making company. So they use their, uh, uh, robots or AI based robots, smart robots in assembly line. So they can reduce the human effort there. And maybe this is a very uh, less risky for the human uh, to like in survival of where like we are using any manufacturing things or assembly line. So and another advantage is like you can use them continuously and economically they are cheaper compared to uh, other options. 
and uh, now okay those were the like robotic application uh, i included some of the application where you i think you guys using in your devices regularly uh, one of them is like smart assistant so on different kind of phones like in uh, apple's phone we can see it in the form of cd so where you can provide some comment via voice and you can get your task done similarly uh, we are having uh, alexa and echo for both are from amazon so you can provide some command and for for there it will get some response so they have like a fixed set of tasks based on that you can provide some inputs and it will give the response like maybe you want to play the music or you want some other task like okay switch on the geezer if it is enabled with your geezer and like maybe you want to switch on light of a particular room uh given that like okay this is already in, in, connected with your Alexa or Echo. Similarly, uh, we are having uh, the Google Home and Google Assistant. So here you can provide in your mobile phone, if it is Android one, or you can give the command and you can get the response and you can do some like predefined set of tasks. And similarly, like Google Home, where you can integrate with your home appliances. Let's say with geezer or lights, you can connect with your this device. And then you if you provide uh, a command to your Google Home device, um, it will act accordingly. Uh, one more interesting application where we call the chatbots, so or they are part of conversational AI, main where two person are talking. One is the system and another side, it is like human being. So this is very much used in customer care services. Suppose uh, from a telecom provider, uh, you are using a service and you want to just check your balance or do some uh, like predefined task. Maybe you can use that bot and the system will reply automatically. And this is also used in like uh, some banks as well, where if there is uh, like some basic tasks can be automated through the chatbots. And if chatbot is not able to respond for your particular task, uh, the task will be assigned to the customer care uh, officer. There. So this reduces the human effort. So many customer care services are now like semi-automated. The first phase is done with the chatbot and if it is not handled, then it goes to the uh, human. Okay, so here we discuss some of the application of AI and which are used through the data science. Uh, these are not limited uh, to those application. There are many now it is like almost every field uh, there is a scope where AI is like integrated or maybe AI generating core products. So there are different roles to fulfill through the data science. I have included in four categories. Uh, one is data analyst, then data engineer, data scientist, and then ML engineer. So let's discuss these uh, into detail. Uh, data analyst, I think this particular designation is quite old. I think maybe you, if you would say 30 or 40 years ago, this designation was already there, but I think there they used to have some core statistical algorithms and maybe some reporting task or MIS task, management information system related. Maybe some newspaper, those were advanced and they are uh, creating some reports and building the charts. So that kind of work was used to done by data analyst. Now, if you see uh, today's data analyst, so that is, the person is having like more advanced uh, tools, just like Power BI or Tableau, or even some sort of Excel's advanced function is also useful. So this person is uh, not supposed to expected uh, like very good in programming, but just having like how to use the tools and how to create the reports. And there are various like advanced tools for that one. So this is not that much of technical job, but I think a person who knows how to handle computer and if he knows about some of the tools, he can opt for that one, like Power BI, where you can provide some reports and visualizations. Uh, next come the role of data engineer, or sometimes people call a big data developer or data developer, or sometimes maybe even software engineer, but with data technologies. So a data engineer is basically a software engineer only, but he uses the tools and technologies which are being used for the big data world. So data engineer, you're supposed to be very good at programming and core computer science principles. And then you should know the tools those are used in data engineering. That might be for the deployment related or creating the data pipelines or maybe deploying the models. 
so if someone is very good at programming and he is good at core computer science skill and interested to into the data field maybe he can opt for data engineer where with the program uh, along with the programming he need some knowledge of data science as well for the production deployment and creating the data pipelines next come uh, like very major role or i'll say like many most of the people follow in this category but their names sometimes may differ because in industry we don't have like very unified way of naming or designating someone they can be called as a data scientist or machine learning scientist or ai scientist and if you specifically work on images or video maybe computer vision scientist or uh, <clears throat> image analyst if it is just specific to images so here like a person supposed to know like all those algorithm which is coming under ai or maybe inside deep learning or inside uh, machine learning field so here the major task is like you supposed to create uh, the data pipeline sorry uh, data model and then see the impact of those one how that uh, improve your product or overall business uh, next category is machine learning engineer this role is somewhere in between data engineer and data scientist so a machine learning learning engineer is a software engineer who knows about how to use the machine learning and how to deploy that one so this role is again like a data scientist and machine learning engineer and data engineer these three are like very high in demand and require like uh, different sort of uh, skills there are common skills like programming and basics of math which is common for all and then there are set of skill which is specific to the role whether it is a data engineer data scientist or ml engineer okay so this is just an overview uh, this is about entry level and i am to talking about the categories if you see further in the industry you will see data engineer to senior data engineer lead data engineer or maybe staff data engineer and then maybe manage your role as well similarly for data scientist it is senior data scientist or uh, staff data scientist principal data scientist and director of data science and vp of data science and so on okay then uh, let's move okay we have uh, now overview of data science and ai then we saw some of the application and then we saw okay what are the roles there so i would like to mention one more thing it it is like uh, not very unified somewhere a person is doing data scientist he uh, in a company but he might be doing just a data engineering and stuff so that is not verified very unified across the industries so it more depends what kind of skill you have rather than the title okay now let's uh, think about okay this process that okay you know overview of this one and you want to become a data scientist or data engineer or maybe ml engineer what is the process for that one what should you study or if you are already an experienced professional but not in the data field how can you transition into this one first thing this is your decision that if it is really uh you want to switch or not because if you're already good in your things and as an experienced professional you are doing well just maybe as a part time or uh, hobby you can learn this one and try to implement uh the ai technologies within your domain and maybe if you are a university student or uh, a different level or bachelor master or phd then okay you are doing your core research or core subjects you are studying along with that you want to see okay i want to study about ml and how can i use in that one and maybe a uh, third option where okay you are interested in this domain and maybe you want to leave your electrical engineer or a mechanical or civil one and you are more interested in this one and you want to make a career so there is a common part which are the core skills which requires for every data scientist irrespective like you are a student or you are an experienced professional and i mention in these five different categories one is like fundamental things which is coming from mathematics and statistics so here we have to study about uh, linear algebra matrix theory and then uh, probability and basics of statistics like hypothesis testing some tests are there like z test t test and similar like ab testing and all those and here also some sort of calculus and partial derivatives because in the core machine learning algorithm they are based on the optimization theories 
so you have to bring those calculus and optimization here the next set of your skill is programming so most of the time in uh, industry uh, we are using python and r uh, and even like if i further differentiate most of the projects and in almost every company there are up uh, teams which we are using python and there are still teams which they use r as well but overall the python uh, things are like more used and then maybe this is more important that you know about uh, the logic building whether you are doing it in python or r it doesn't matter but you should be good at writing the logic logic maybe it is through the python or r <clears throat> third portion is machine learning where uh, we are having the core algorithms those are supervised unsupervised learning and even beyond that one so but essentially that you should know about uh, supervised and unsupervised and semi supervised learning algorithm from the machine learning next come the visualization so this can come from either programming and there are already some tools like power bi or tableau if you are doing from the programming way you can use some predefined libraries and call those function and you can utilize those then comes tools okay so if you are opting for python then you, there are various libraries like pandas for data data frames and all numpy for the numerical things which is numerical python sklearn is where this is called scikit learn scientific so their machine learning and other algorithms are there dask and spark is for distributed processing so you expect that you are working on a large or really very big data set so that you cannot do on your single processor so you're supposed to work on distributed things okay so i think there are some question or reason so let's uh, uh give me just two more slides then we will take the questions okay uh, i can come back to the slides as well so the the first portion i mentioned like core skill and i think that is like must have one along with that there is uh, some advanced things as well like deep learning where most of the neural networks are coming from and natural language processing if you have the your data in the form of text then i think you have to study nlp so you can pre process one thing i uh, forget to mention that one advanced thing is this reinforcement learning but that is i think kind of advanced thing once you go through the basics like the first five thing then you go deep learning nlp and then might go for reinforcement learning so these are the like skill sets and okay the basic and maybe then intermediate and advanced so i would like to mention one thing or maybe i can i should highlight that uh, this is a growing field so it is not like okay you have studied these five set of skill and then you are good every day there is a new algorithm from different conferences or journals or academic research or industry research you should have a habit of studying the new things i think i'll say every day or at least every week where you can obtain the new skills so and that's supposed to be on your own way like okay you have you are studied your during your degrees and maybe on also for the projects in industry but essential thing is that you should have a habit of self learning then only you will uh, get all those new techniques and maybe tools to use in your data science project now okay i have listed skills here but i haven't mentioned resources like how to learn or do we have to go to a university or is there any other way for that one so one thing if you are already in university maybe you can learn from your uh, professors but uh, those okay still it is okay those who are not in university and don't want to go for that one uh, in the open source era i think we are a very good uh, mooc that is massive open online courses and they are i think almost free most of them are free and if you just want to audit i think i can say almost all of them are free so i have listed some common resources which are free and you can learn uh, based on your own way for the fundamental like maths and statistics i think you can go with your university uh, related books where you studied maths like linear algebra matrix theory some calculus and some sort of optimization as well alternatively you can go to khan academy where you will see this one because uh, the fundamental is required i can say except optimization all those are like 12th standard things optimization is i think that is not covered in the school level but you can study maybe on youtube or on khan academy as well and uh, next is programming 
uh, I don't have any personal favorite course. There are like dozens of courses on Python and R. And if you opt for Coursera, EDX and Udacity, or maybe there are many which are only on YouTube, there are a lot of courses. You're supposed to study the basics, let's say if it is a Python, then basics of Python, loops, syntax, and then file reading, data processing, data frame, and few libraries like NumPy, Panda, Scikit-learn, and SciPy, scientific Python. And apart from that one, maybe you can uh, study the OOPS concept in Python and R. And those all courses are free, you can audit for. Uh, next come for the machine learning. My personal favorite is in Unix course on Coursera. So I think uh, there is no, we cannot see any data scientist who has not gone through this course. This is the level is from basic to intermediate level. And maybe if you want to go to advanced course, then after this, you can prefer the uh, one online course from the Oxford University, which is available on YouTube and also on their own website. So and so for basic to intermediate level, first you start with uh, NDUNX course on machine learning. This is available on Coursera. Next come the deep learning uh, for the deep. Uh, first, I think again, this is from NDUNX on Coursera, also available on deeplearning.ai. So deep learning specialization is there. So this have I think four or five courses that you can go and good number of assignments and uh, overall quiz and practical assignments. After this, okay, so again, this is basic to intermediate level if you want to go advanced. Uh, I think again, uh, for I included one more for basic to intermediate level is deep learning course from NPTEL. So this is a joint program from IIT, IISC and top NITs. So this course you can get on YouTube, just search uh, NPTEL IIT Madras deep learning course. So these two are like basic to intermediate level. And if you want to go beyond that one, say like you have good and you've done a lot of practice on that one, then opt for deep learning by Nando D. Fritias. So he's a Oxford University professor. His course is available on both Oxford University's website as well as on YouTube. So maybe you can go into this sequence. So deep learning one is, uh, I think we have covered. Next is NLP or natural language processing. Uh, I took again the specialization from deep learning. So this is a, I think three or four course on Coursera also on deep learning.ai. And this is basic to intermediate level. And for advanced level, you can go with uh, Stanford University NLP course that uses deep learning uh, for NLP, which is CS224, quite popular in industry. For and next is for visualization. If you want to do it from the coding perspective, Matplotlib and Cburn are two Python libraries where you can use. And if you want to do it from the tools, then maybe a Tableau and Power BI are useful. Okay, so this I talked about the like theoretical study or where to practice and how to get the data. So you might have heard about Kegel.com. This is a website where uh, the company launch, launches different competitions and they provide data and problem statement. And there are a lot of data scientists, they share their notebooks and code. So you can learn from their code, like how they have uh, approached one particular problem. So this is really a very good practical approach to learn data science that you start from a problem and see how other people have approached. If they have used particular algorithm, okay, learn the theory behind that one and then try to replicate that one. So follow the Kegel regularly and this is really good for your practice. Then if you want to be up to date with your uh, data science and AI skill, you should follow some of the news and blogs. KD Nuggets uh, and Data Science Central are two like news and blogs, my personal favorite, where like I think you, every day or every week you get new articles. So you can read those and uh, enhance your knowledge. The third one is uh, I have put one GitHub link where uh, there are a lot of resources, which I haven't included here. There are a lot of conferences related to AI, ML and data science. So what are the top conferences? They are listed on this part, third link, last link, like awesome uh, hyphen data science on GitHub. Uh, if you like, you can take a screenshot of this and the previous slide if you want. Uh, if you think like you can forget, then maybe a screenshot will help you to take this one. So here, like all the courses which are available related to data science, one. So you can choose uh, based on your interest. 
Okay, so I think uh, this is about uh, the overview uh, and all those things which I discussed. Now we uh, this is open for the Q and A. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mathematics and uh, status. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask that uh, mathematics and statistics, which level is required? Twelfth level only, or like above that? Okay. So, uh, other than optimization, the math is really basic, which you are supposed to know. So I can say like, okay, twelfth level is the fine because uh, we studied the linear algebra, uh, calculus and it's, I think uh, part of optimization theory. So there you can read it from there. And again, I think uh, this is not required for all kinds of data scientists. Suppose you are working on an NLP project, which is text. So there uh, you don't require much of math because your text data is there. And I think you need separate kind of approaches. But if you are uh, focused on numeric data, uh, only numeric data is there. Maybe you need good knowledge of statics, but I think this is more of like hypothesis testing and like basic or uh, probability theory. I think that should be sufficient to understand the theory. So if tomorrow there is one more algorithms comes, it might not be sufficient. That time you might have to learn something extra, but to start your journey as a data scientist, I think those are the like some basic things. Uh, statistics, which level did you? Okay, so in the statics, uh, I would like mention uh, hypothesis Sam. testing. Let's say you know the P test, sorry, T test, G test, ANOVA, like anal analysis of variance, and you know the correlation covariance and how to use and when to use. And that, that, that is, I think, for entry level, it is sufficient. And where can I learn this all thing? Okay, uh, I mentioned like uh, maths and steps, you can follow the Khan okay. Academy. Uh, and apart from this one, uh, you can just, uh, in the course era, if you search maths, uh, like maths and steps for data science, you will get a lot of courses there. And, and this is our free courses. Okay, so most of the courses are free. And there are two things where like you can audit, I mean, you will not get any certification. Like auditing is like learning and just watching their videos and maybe you won't get able to submit your assignments, but just auditing is free, I think in for almost all of the courses. Okay, I got one question on chat that, uh, can you please share some universities for masters in data science, especially in Germany and Canada? So, okay, I can talk about Germany because I've been there during my master. So if you ask uh, the same question to any of the German guy, I think I had the similar question when I was doing the master. They'll say, okay, uh, we have all the universities and all the universities are really good. So it is not like in India that IITs are on top and then we prefer some local college after that. In Germany, their education system is really good. Almost all of the universities are very good. Uh, I'm not really uh, aware of how many of them are having the data science project, but traditional ML and AI will be there in either computer science department. They call it informatic department. So their computer science is named as an informatic so there you can just uh, see uh, so some of the universities which I'm aware they're called TU9. So here we are having like IIT, similarly they have technical universities. So nine universities are there, they're clubbed into TU9. Uh, maybe you can uh, just search their website and then see. And again, Canada, uh, sorry, I'm not aware of that one. Maybe you can just see QS world ranking for the computer science and AI and just a short list for your, your degree. Mm, okay, next is 
uh, what's the probability of getting a data scientist job if we know R and not Python? Okay, so this is, I think uh, the question is itself framed into the data science way. So data science is not just about R or Python. They are just helping you to bring your thoughts, how can you implement through a computer system? So this is just one essential part which you're supposed to have. If you want to compare, uh, okay, so further, like you have uh, need more skills, which I mentioned like machine learning, visualization tools, and some fundamentals from the maths and states. So relatively, the Python related teams and projects are more in the industry. So there are more job openings which prefer Python. But I think this is just a syntax. If you know Python, you can easily switch to R. And if you know R and good at writing the logics, you can easily switch to Python. Uh, okay, next question for me is, uh, my sister has applied for University of Sheffield, UK. Can we get go ahead with this university? Is this a good university? Uh, okay, uh, sorry, I'm not aware of this one. Maybe uh, you check the, like uh, when you call this university as a good university, maybe check overall ranking of that university worldwide and also check the ranking of your department. And if it is for master or PhD, then please also check how good that research group or that uh, project supervisor is having that one. And see where the like alumni of their research group or university or department is working. They will give you the idea. Okay, next question. Is it better to do masters in data science or the courses you have provided uh, will do? Okay, this is, I think, uh, the very common question every person who is at this particular stage ask. Okay, so if you are a self-learner, I would say, okay, there is no need to especially uh, give your two years into the master. If you are self-disciplined and self-learner, you can learn it from online and I think for free as well. But if you are not like, okay, self-disciplined and you need some class which can like, okay, force you to do it regularly, maybe you should opt for a university. Okay, how about data analytics? Uh, how about data analytics? Is the pathway to data scientist? What shall I opt for if I were being a SAP consultant to shift my career? Okay, so uh, I don't know like uh, as a SAP consultant, what kind of tools and technologies you are using. Uh, I can give you overview about data analytics. So a technical person refers as AI and data science. If you ask similar things, a business guy will say, okay, this is data analytics. So those who prefer MBA and they, they studied, I think similar things, but not much advanced the basics and they call it as a data analytics. So most of the things which related to data analysis comes under data analytics part. Okay, our next question is from Aban is that what is the difference between data engineer and data scientist? Okay, so there are very, uh, there are few skills which is common like programming and the understanding of the business, but still there is a difference in data engineer. Data engineer is a software engineer who knows the data technologies. He doesn't have to know the in-depth theory of all those AI, ML, or DL algorithm. But in uh, data scientist, I think you must be very good at the theoretical portion where you can study about AI and its algorithm. Okay, then the next question is from Aishas. What do you think is best? sub branch like NLP, computer vision, speech recognition, et cetera, from AI and DS that can be a growth component for an electronics and communication engineer with a good grip in IoT. Okay, okay. So now it is a comparison of NLP. So NLP is for text data and computer vision that is for images and video. Speech is I think then for audio. So if someone is a electronics and communication engineer, I think he or she can go in any of the subfields. 
and is an entry level if you are an like, uh, electronics engineer they do not expect uh, to work on any specific one but uh, if uh, you are want if you want to be specialized in one then uh, suppose you are an experienced uh, so professional try to think with your existing projects if they are more suitable with nlp or more suitable with uh, computer vision or speech accordingly you can opt for one <clears throat> Then uh, Sayyid Zia. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, this was answer to previous question. Uh, regarding EDA, does descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, and prescriptive analysis fall under EDA? If not, on what basis are they categorized? So these are part of some like uh, <coughs> analytics, we can say, uh, descriptive one, where we are describing. And so descriptive one is falls under EDA where you can uh, describe what kind of features are they are, what is the mathematical properties are there. Diagnostic is something, okay, something happened, but you want to see why that happened. Let's say for a particular feature in particular one, let's say you are giving the command to uh, your Google Assistant and something went wrong, then you want to identify. So this can call diagnostic analytics or we can say root cause. Predictive one is false under like uh, most things where machine learning algorithm is used either for classification or for regression. And next is prescriptive. So this is uh, in association with the diagnostic, you have some root cause and you want to figure out and you want to create a solution for that one. So that comes for the prospective one. Uh, I'm getting some voice, but I think that is not properly audible. Uh, one question is one of the major question lies that which domain to choose either towards a software development field or a data science field. Which one do you prefer? Uh, okay, I'm already uh, into data science one, so might be uh, this question is for the person uh, who is currently at university and want to decide. So if you, so maybe there is a lot of news about data science and it doesn't mean uh, other computer science uh, related fields are not doing anything into the research or development. No, the, so there is still traditional research which is going beyond ML and uh, data science. So if suppose you are very good at uh, computation theory and you want to perform theoretical research, that is also okay. It doesn't mean like, okay, everyone is going towards data science, so you're supp also supposed to go there. If you are very good at that one, uh, please continue that one. Maybe someone is very good in optimization theory, maybe he can continue his research or the higher studies into that one. So, and if uh, for software development, if you are very good at uh, like programming and you are doing the competitive programming, like people do on Geeks for Geeks or Lead Code, and you really enjoy doing that one, I would say you should opt for software engineering. And those people who are or more of the like uh, research mindset and they can formulate problems and then they try to solve problem. Those who are from the research mindset, they can go for uh, data science. If your comparison is with software engineer versus uh, data scientists. Is UI and UX designing related to data science? No, it is not related. Maybe there is something uh, projects where you want to see, okay, I have two options to design UI and let's say which one works best for the customer. You can decide that using a data science project, but UI and UX development is not part of data science. They are separate things where you need a way of development and different technologies. Uh, again, I got one question. What is skills required for data engineer? For a data engineer, you should know, should be very good at programming, maybe like Python or R. And on top of that one, you should know about data pipelines, about databases and the model deployment part. And then there are various tools, I think, uh, that you learn along with your job, not at uh, entry level.
Hello. Hello. Uh, yes, I am actually currently in a data analyst role uh, since last six, seven years, and uh, I do not have a technical background. My education is into human resources uh, MBA, okay. and uh, uh, so I um, I want to move into the next level of analytics that is currently I'm in a very descriptive stage of analytics. So I want to move into predictive and prescriptive. So the goals that uh, I have set is to learning Python and uh, SQL. And um, also it's in, if SQL is done, I'll also be moving into the R studio, which is very much similar. So um, apart from that, and, and that would be from a machine learning perspective, um, also, I'm planning to learn, uh, I'm planning to get into maths and statistics. That would be on a uh, level 12 uh, uh, to understand, uh, uh, because I work on a lot of attrition analysis data and compensation data. So okay. uh, that's the uh, goals that I've set. So I want to know if I'm moving in the right direction and uh, do I, uh, uh, or any other skills that you would suggest for me? Yeah, sure. So I think your background from uh, human resource department, where like uh, I think you mentioned to majorly use projects like compensation analysis and attrition analysis. So that is being done in many of uh, the companies. That is good. From the skill perspective, you need uh, one of the programming. Uh, if you want to move further, you can opt for Python or R, whichever you are okay. And if you want to go with the predictive analytics, I think you need to know uh, basics of machine learning. So you can opt for some basic course like from Endunuk and study about machine learning. If you know machine learning, Python and SQL, I think uh, you can do the initial level projects, initial level predictive uh, modeling related projects there. Okay. Uh, so um, my our goal actually is uh, to move to uh, US in the next two to three years. So uh, I want to understand because um, currently I'm a functional person. So and I'm going to move my role more into functional and technical. But would this be enough uh, for uh, applying for roles and uh, you know to getting shortlisted for uh, an organization in US? Um, or do we because we know that if you are a software engineer, you have more opportunities. But understanding what data analytics is right now and how it is booming going to boom in the next few years would this be sufficient uh, to uh, to groom myself uh, for this opportunity okay so if you are thinking about that uh, uh, relocating so the thing is if this is within the company that might be easier but if you go for like through another company where you are searching the job and then that so obviously if you are doing those projects, so then maybe the, your knowledge of HR and then knowledge of uh, this machine learning or predictive analytics will make you like favorable candidate. Suppose tomorrow, if you ask me to work in HR department, uh, I don't know much about that because I just know the technology. So there it will be an advantage for you that you know the domain and you know the predictive analytics. But again, someone is coming, going from India to US, it depends totally upon the company which is hiring, what level of uh, the expertise is required, if they are getting it in the local US market or not. So there are several factor, but uh, it depends upon your uh, like level of interest that if you are getting how many hours and what kind of interest you are having. If you are good at machine learning and Python, SQL, Maybe for uh, human resource related department, these are the like good things a uh, like beginner level data scientist have. Okay, so if I uh, so I was thinking of doing a certification as well, um, or I did inquire with a lot of uh, universities um, <laughs> which are giving an online course for data science and uh, machine learning. So it's like a one year course, and they are going to charge something around three to four lakhs. Uh, I, uh, and some of them have a tie up with US universities. Will that further help my case? Or if I'm a self learner and I go through uh, these short courses, which are uh, cost effective as well, which you suggested uh, in this meeting. So would that be helpful or a certification will help me to, if my ultimate goal is to uh, move to US with uh, data science role or uh, you know, create my role in a way that will help me to uh, move to US. Okay, so uh, I think certification degrees, they help, but I think it's depend upon person to person. So uh, if you're not a self learner, maybe you can opt that one. 
but i think considering that amount and if you are very like self disciplined and self learner free resources are available and they are from the top most universities and i think best professor from the world you can get those courses free from mit stanford harvard and top iits as well so it's up to you uh, i think um, it's more of the like subjective question rather than yes or no let's say if i interview a candidate then i might not be interested in the label he mentioned okay is from taken this certification or this one that might be the criteria for shortlisting but as an interviewer or a technical person i would check okay how good or depth knowledge or as per requirement the knowledge is there or not or the even the practical experience is there or not okay. is that answer your question uh yeah just one more question i'm sorry uh so i i if i would just say in one sentence a data scientist course would be more helpful or a software engineer uh, uh i mean a role in data science or being a, a corporate software engineer would help me uh us to move to us uh, in your case uh, i think data science will more uh, helpful okay because of functional plus technical uh, yeah role. yeah i think you okay. can use your domain skill from the hr and the technical part which you want to learn okay so since i'm already working in this in since last 6 7 years i think i'll groom myself rather than switching my role to software engineer i'll groom myself further in data science that would be helpful right yeah, yeah i hope so okay thank you okay so safe by it is uh, i think close to 330 how many question we can take hello okay. hi sir i do have a question yeah sure please go maybe uh, just give me a moment i'll just to find out my question quickly mm-hmm. uh i am right uh, rightly i am uh, pursuing my masters in construction management from a university in london uh, i don't really find a spark in the particular subject i am literally keenly you know attracted towards the it field and uh, i'm not going to deny the fact that if i had to switch i had to go from the scratch right and uh, the steps that you have mentioned to land myself into uh, um, uh, ai or ds would that be just sufficient for me to compete with other people who are already in the field okay so right now you are pursuing your master in civil construction so management yeah construction civil engineering management. yeah okay Okay, so the thing is, uh, just after master. Okay, so you have any prior experience is uh, in industry, or you went to master just after your bachelor? Like in the same industry or in my in any experience? so any kind of work experience during after no no bachelor? not really soon after finishing my bachelor's I came okay. from masters. Okay, so I think uh, again you will enter into industry as a fresher level, and I think your master degree might not help because that is into a different field. Yeah, so cool. uh, obviously there is a lot of competition on entry level because now it is i think uh, there are many people who, who is graduating at i think btech level and also at master level so there will be a like very good competition but i think it's uh, depend upon what kind of quality uh, projects or theoretical skill you have during your like uh, this degree if that is the thing you can invest time uh, i wouldn't say this is impossible that uh, you are hanging that master in civil and then you cannot come to this one there are uh, example where people are from civil mechanical they studied uh, data science themselves and maybe through some course on online and they are working as a data scientist successfully okay but i think so, you need to put yeah. more effort because i don't think you are having some kind of programming experience maybe the math part is common but <clears throat> programming and those ai related stuff you have to do yeah i understand i just have a follow up question with this uh, even if i you know decide to enter the field uh, i would be like self learning the courses and programs without any certification from any uh, my particular you know authorization or organization how do i make my way through it okay uh, i just mentioned the resources here so i think uh, what is important that uh, kind of skills and the experience you have rather than the degree so maybe when you do this theoretical part and on kegel and maybe you can learn your you can do the projects independently based on that you can say okay i have this much of experience in data science okay okay thank you so much thank you
Okay, for uh, last question, I think there was some. I have also same case. Like I'm pursuing bachelor. Yeah, so, uh, I'm pursuing bachelor in physics, but I'm not interested in it. So can I switch to data science? Okay, so can uh, it is bachelor's in physics. So I'll give you a, like example where many of my German colleagues are PhD in physics and then they are doing the data science. So maybe you are studying the basic physics as of now, but when you go at advanced level, there are some projects and some topics where you can use data science within physics. And this is the one option. Second option is maybe, uh, so you started the bachelor, maybe you complete this one and try to figure out your bachelor thesis project where you can use physics and data science together. There are definitely this kind of projects where you can use. Okay, so from Heba, there is a question. Being a commerce graduate, being a commerce graduate, can I get into data science field? Okay, so yeah, there are some data scientists who do the research on economics or policy making. So these kind of posts are in government sector is, is available also in the corporate sector. So you get the knowledge of your like uh, this commerce where you study your branch related, your specific subjects, then you can call like a data science or a economist. So there are many economics related things where you can use data science. So can this I, is an can, uh, Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Can I share my insights on this question? Because I'm from commerce background and I'm into data analytics since last seven years. Okay. So, uh, so I have done, I got into data analytics pure on uh, just, I went for an interview. I was not really aware what the role was about, but um, I got cleared based on my functional knowledge of HR. And since it's an HR analytics, I got selected. All the skills that I uh, worked on the, uh, uh, today, I'm uh, on a technical side. I've learned, I'm learning SQL as well. And I'm, uh, I'm very well versed with Power BI and uh, 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 all tricks, which is a data manipulation tool. So all of these skills, I'm very good with Excel as well. So all of these two uh, skills I've learned on the job. Uh, so I, I coming from this kind of a background, I would say it's, uh, it's not a difficult thing. It's just that uh, you need to know these, uh, even if you are good with Excel and base of technical, few technical skills, uh, mm -hmm. you can definitely get into data analytics. Yeah. So, sorry, I just wanted to just share my experience uh, coming from the same background. Yeah, this is useful for others, I guess. Sure, like this things help because uh, there are uh, two, three things. One is computer science skill, one is fundamental or math skill, and third is the domain knowledge. So if you are already in a domain, then I think one, or, uh, one out of three things you are already having. So then you are learning other things, maybe for the programming or other tools that enhance your learning. Okay, so one question is, does TUM, so I think this refer uh, Technical University of Munich in Germany, offer data analysis course for MS? Uh, I'm not, but I'm sure that they are doing some kind of AI and ML research for sure. So maybe the name is them differs, but uh, you can check that one. So something uh, in the old universities, if you see there is no specific data science or AI related role. But if you enter for computer science masters as an elective subjects, you can choose all those subjects which comes for the AI or data science. So you not just focus on, okay, the, the course name is AI or data science. If the course name is still computer science, let's say in the fourth semester, you are going through 20 different courses and let's say five is fixed, then you then, then remaining 15, you can opt as an elective subject. So in the master degree, they provide a lot of uh, flexibility to choose your elective subjects. There you can just do. This approach is, I think, uh, used in many of the universities. They will fix or they make the compulsory subjects, like few of them, let's say 20% or so, and the remaining at least 50 or up to 80%, it is a flexible. 
so a student can elect their subjects and then they can go for different direction next question is how long it would take to study data science and land for a job okay <laughs> so it depends upon how much time or how much dedication you have so whatever courses i mentioned i think uh, they in the university are covered in i think 18 to 24 months and it depend upon you like if you are working professional and you are not able to give that much time and if you are a student and you can give more time then maybe you can finish it early okay from one question again do i need to learn functional programming or is object oriented programming for data engineer data scientist well? for data scientist i think uh, basic uh, programming plus oop is enough and also for data engineer that goes same but i think you should have uh, like practice to write the complex logic uh, okay one question is from farhan i think he's raising his hand uh, could you please go ahead uh, sorry um, i have a question follow up uh, around this functional programming um okay. normally for software engineering it's heavy on functional programming the coding side they have to be very very technically strong yep. so uh, however for data engineering or data scientist is it the same case or is it okay as you mentioned uh, just to understand you know op uh, oriented programming okay so the thing is uh, in the industry data scientist role is not same okay if in a within company there are two teams so one in one team they have such project or product where their needs are different and maybe the another team they are having the different kind of requirement so there are roles which are more on the software side side let's see you are building a product and where most of the things is like 80% of the time you are doing the coding and maybe some algorithm portion which is done by another team or your colleague that time i think you have to be uh, at expert level there that side let's say like if you either do the oop object oriented or functional one and if a data scientist who is a core researcher and doing a project on let's say text mining or computer vision but he is more inclined towards research i think for him object oriented plus basic of program is enough so there is no unified way where we can define this one so one data scientist is supposed working in company a if he applies for company b suppose he is very good in everything but maybe he is rejected because their role was different from company a to company b so there are both the roles available where uh, like okay even one more role i would mention that there are some data scientists that do not know programming at all they just use the tools so, uh, they use just tools and they are doing the data science and there are data scientists who are like creating the platform yeah acha nahi milega yeah mute yourself could you please mute yourself thank you so there are data scientists who do not know uh the programming at all they are doing there are data scientists they are on average but they are more inclined towards uh, theoretical concepts and they are doing some research on algorithms and then there are data scientists who are doing uh, creating the platforms like azure azure ml studio or google cloud if you are op- aiming for those kind of thing i think you should be on top level of the programming uh does that answer your question yeah uh, just one more thing um because you you mentioned google cloud and uh, you know azure so um, if 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 one is moving towards the technical side where the programming is needed do we also need to um, acquire the skills around aws cloud programming um you know s3 buckets and different services within aws or uh, google as well yeah so i think a uh, fresher level that is not required because we don't have available that uh, maybe some student version is or community version is there but the thing is when we do uh, the project at enterprise level so our data is really huge that we cannot do on the local system that time you supposed to know this one so i think uh, most of the companies opt either aws azure or gcp google cloud platform so their underlying technologies are i think similar so if you are 
into the industry and you got some experience, then I think you should also learn about either AWS, Azure, or Cloud uh, GCP. And but I think that is not an absolute need for at a beginner level. If it is there, I think it, if okay. you have it, it is good. But I think fresher level, they do not mention okay. uh, this kind of requirement. Okay, if if at all we have we pursue with the, those uh, the services, any any particular service in uh, like you know um, any module uh, specifically uh, would would be helpful. Okay, that's depend upon your profile because on uh, cloud I think there are various role. On yeah. cloud you will see data engineer role. It's, they are doing their own way, and there are data scientists and there are some platform engineers. So based on that one, suppose you are a data scientist, then maybe uh, in the Azure, there is called Azure ML Studio that you will prefer. Accordingly, based on your experience or your skills, you can choose which services to opt for. Thank you. Okay, uh, anything else from anyone? Okay, uh, thanks a lot, Jazakumullah Khair, for this uh, very interesting and very insightful session. So we got to learn so many new things and also had a good discussion around them. So 